Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here at Maker Faire 2016, and it's so awesome to see Eric Stackpole again. Eric, how you doing? I'm doing very well, good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, Eric, of course, co-founder of Open ROV. You guys make drones that go in the water. Underwater robots, and you guys are veterans of Maker Faire at this point. I've been here since how many years now? Yeah, that's right, Like it's our first year with Open ROV here was 2010, so. Wow, it's been, I guess, more than five years. Yeah, your sixth year here, yeah. and you guys have iterated on the robot. So for people out there who maybe have not seen or need a reminder of what Open ROV is, can you talk about what the first robot did and the first two robots? Yeah, absolutely. So Open ROV stands for Open Source Remotely Operated Vehicle. And the general idea is these are robots that go underwater and they send live video up to the surface. So just like a modern day drone, you can see what it sees and chase fish around and stuff. We started because I heard that there was lost treasure in the bottom of a water-filled cave way up in the Trinity Alps. And so we wanted to explore this underwater cave and see if we could find 100 pounds of gold. Right, and people have taken the robot, which you have the, the version that's been out for a while here, on expeditions. Yeah, that's definitely right. Um, so this vehicle now, we, we've sold more than 3,000 of them. I think we're the largest volume ROV manufacturer in the world. We've come a long way since 2010. And people have used them for amazing things. Um, we've uh, seen people uh, diving on shipwrecks. Uh, recently, we did a backpacking trip uh, two and a half days way up to a high alpine lake at 11,000 feet and uh, explored this lake that has a World War II bomber that crashed in it. And hardly anyone had ever seen that because you can backpack with this. So you can go to these remote places. And um, in a few weeks, actually, we're going to go explore another shipwreck, a 200 foot long steamship in Lake Tahoe that's at 400 feet of depth. That just changes the way you think about going on trips. <laughs> when you know that you see a coastline, you know if you're going to be on a boat, you can go underwater and document some really fascinating footage. Yeah, you know, so many people don't realize how much stuff is down there. I mean, almost every single dive we do, we see things you'd never expect. There was a high school that built uh, this. It's a kit, and they, they put it together, and they went to Lake Merritt, this lake in the middle of Oakland, you know, the big city of Oakland. And they dived it in, and there was this sea hare, this, this, this like foot-long creature. It looks like a slug, and it's purple and orange, and it has these kind of ear-looking things, and it was crawling along the bottom. And there in the middle of the city is this weird creature you never would have known. It's just a few meters below the surface. Incredible. Well, in the <laughs> six years since you guys have been making these robots, you know, technology has improved. There are, there's a whole community of, you know, drone owners and enthusiasts who know that they can use these robots to capture some cool video. So there's a new product coming out, a new ROV. Can oh, yeah. you talk about this? God, I have to tell you, I am so excited about this. This is a culmination of years and years of figuring out how to do our underwater drones the right way. And uh, the new product is called Trident, and I've got one here. So look at this. This is a hydrodynamic, it's the Ferrari of, of underwater drones. And um, it is fast, it goes at two meters per second. That's the speed of Michael Phelps in the Olympics. And um, what that translates into is, is current penetration. You can now go in uh, streams or in the ocean when there's a lot of tidal current, um, and it just zooms around. On it, uh, in the front here, you can't really see it, um, is a camera we've been spending a lot of time developing. It sends stunning video up to the surface. It's 1080p HD, um, extremely good color rendition and low light sensitivity. So when you're diving this underwater, uh, you see the world in, in this vivid way that, that really makes you feel like you're a part of it. So propulsion and the video quality seem like the big upgrades for this. Let's talk about propulsion for a second. Why sure. is it important that you have a stronger motor? When you think about you know, putting this underwater, just like the analogy of putting a drone in the air, the higher you go, the stronger the wind current is. It's, is it the same or is it the opposite when you put it underwater? No, I think you've got it exactly right. You know, It all is about thrust to drag ratio. So although the vehicle is small, and a lot of the people would equate, oh, you need a larger vehicle to go in higher currents, that's actually not the case. What you need is a lot of power compared to how much drag you have. And this is a really sleek vehicle, which allows it to flow through the water quickly. Um, the thrusters are going to be custom-built thrusters. They give it uh, almost a kilogram uh, force uh, each. So um, you can actually clear out of the water. This can actually jump out of the water under full propulsion. Um, and then uh, also, you know, another big part of this is that it's extremely durable and rugged. You know, um, the current um, vehicle that we're selling is built as a kit and you can kind of put it together. This one's going to be ready to go out of the box and you can bring it on your fishing boat, throw it in the back of your pickup truck. It's ready to really be a workhorse for you. Yeah, in, in the consumer quads, it's RTF, ready to fly. These are ready to dive. Yeah, exactly. And you know, we're actually learning a lot from the aerial drone market. You know, FPV flying has become really popular yeah. and you know, we've always been doing that. We've always had live video, but now we're also working on Oculus Rift and other VR goggle integration. So you can wear this VR headset and 
and uh, look around and you feel like you're in the cockpit of a submarine. Um, so uh, as you're flying, you're really immersed. You have a better field of view than if you're wearing a scuba mask. So it's a wide angle lens here that then you can pan across. Yeah. Now it is still a tethered experience that your, your control right. is coming through the tether. Is there anything different with that tethered system? Yeah, the tether is really awesome. So, you know, just to, to um, clear the air, a lot of people wonder, you know, well, why do you have it tethered? You know, why don't you just make it wireless? And the reason is that radio waves don't travel through water. So if you want that live video, it has to be tethered. But one of the solutions we've come up with is something I'm really proud of. It's a radio buoy that this tows. So as this moves through the water, it's towing a buoy on the surface. It's kind of a surfboard shaped thing about a foot long. And that sends a wireless signal back to shore. So you could throw this into the water and you don't even need a boat anymore. That really um, is effectively a tetherless experience then. Yeah, and I, I think it's something that we really, um, has, it really has been needed in underwater vehicles and it hasn't really been uh, implemented too much. Um, and it also has a GPS, so that kind of allows you to track generally where you are. You can guess where the vehicle is based on where the buoy is. And then the tether itself is also really awesome. You'll see it's thicker than what we've had before. Uh, that's because it has this uh, high strength foam. It's neutrally buoyant, which means it doesn't sink or float. Yeah. So that way you don't get stuck on debris or anything like that. Um, it kind of just is suspended in the water column. Also inside we have a 300 pound test Kevlar strength member. So the tether is extremely strong. Um, and now if you did get wrapped around that branch or something, you can pull on it uh, and it won't, you know, it will never break. Right, mm -hmm. right. And also for retrieval, because you have the buoy, it's easy for you to get back out in the water, pull it up. Uh, what is your battery life expected use time for this? <laughs> That's another really fun thing to talk about. You know, most people who fly aerial drones are used to 20 minute of dive time or flight time. Uh, for us, um, with uh, nominal usage, you can go for up to four hours on a single dive. Um, so that's really, really cool. I mean, it allows you to, um, you know, basically fly until you're tired of flying. Also, we're working, this is a detachable tether, we're working on autonomous uh, uh, software for this. So you could um, potentially remove the tether, you know, plop on like a GPS or an IMU system and have it do transects and then come back up to the surface for you. So that's hopefully coming in the not too distant future. So what's the status of trying right now and when can people get their hands on it to go on their own dives? So we're doing pre-sales right now. Uh, we did a Kickstarter about six months ago that did really well and people still wanted them. So um, normally this is gonna retail for about $1,500, $1,499. Uh, but for the next few months, we're going to be selling it for $1,199. Um, and uh, so that's a really good deal. Um, the pre-sales are going on for this summer um, and then we're gonna start shipping in November and then we'll probably finish shipping the first batch uh, around March. And um, the earlier people buy, the sooner we'll ship. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eric. It's great to see you, a veteran of Maker Faire. we got to take these out in the water sometime. We'll have to visit you at your shop. I would love to do that. There's so much to explore out there. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks.